I'm Laurie Cardoza-Moore, and this is Focus on Israel. PJTN has been involved in exposing problematic textbooks in American schools since 2012. Much of the hate and propaganda I found had its inception in the Middle East. From the textbooks used there to incite hatred against the Jewish people and the Jewish state. Hello and welcome to this edition of Focus on Israel. I'm Laurie Cardoza Moore, founder of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, a nonprofit organization dedicated to educating and sharing the message of Christian biblical responsibility to the people and land of Israel in the face of a growing global genocidal anti-Semitism. Proclaiming justice to the nations was birthed to stop the silence, to wake up Christians and people of conscience to the realities of a world bent on destroying Israel and the Jewish people. Since 2005, PJTN has a proven track record of fighting for the rights of Israel and the Jewish people, a record of standing firm in the face of overwhelming odds against a world of Jew and Israel hatred, a record of not compromising on the very plan of God. PJTN's strategy involves a campaign of biblical truth. The more Christians who see our materials and our media content, the more that will stand with the Jewish people and Israel. So media is a prime weapon of our strategy. This media battle is also being waged by Palestinian Media Watch, a watchdog group founded in 1996 by Itamar Marcus. Palestinian Media Watch describes itself as an Israeli research institute that studies Palestinian society from a broad range of perspectives by monitoring and analyzing the Palestinian Authority through its media and school books. Itamar Marcus is an Israeli political activist, researcher, and the founder and director of Palestinian Media Watch. His work on textbooks led Benjamin Netanyahu to appoint Marcus to represent Israel in the negotiations with the Palestinians on incitement in the Trilateral Anti-Incitement Committee. As director of research for the Center for Monitoring the Impact of Peace from 1998 to 2000, Marcus wrote reports on Palestinian Authority, Syrian, and Jordanian textbooks. Marcus testified before the Education Subcommittee of the U.S. Senate Committee on Allocations documenting the Palestinian Authority's indoctrination of children to seek death as martyrs. He has also presented before members of Congress and to members of Parliament in numerous countries, including the European Union, Britain, France, Canada, and Australia and has lectured in universities and conferences worldwide. In my research, I discovered that the Palestinian Authority, as well as UNRWA, was involved in publishing curriculum and textbooks for children K-12 through in the Palestinian-controlled areas. I also learned that they load it with propaganda, even more egregious than what we're finding in American textbooks. And so, on a recent visit to Jerusalem, I had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Marcus about his recent research concerning Palestinian textbooks and how they were being used to propagate the violence against Jews. Palestinian Media Watch was founded in 1996. This was uh, three years after the signing of the Oslo Accords. And the world believed, the world hoped that this was a serious uh, a serious uh, march toward peace on the part of the Palestinian Authority. Israel certainly saw it that way. Well, as soon as we started watching Palestinian television uh, and reading the newspapers, we realized that there was an indoctrination going on by the Palestinian leadership of their children, of their adults, of everyone. Uh, hatred, demonization, Jews are evil, Jews are, Jews are evil in, because of what we did nationalistically, and Jews are evil because of Islam. Islam determines that we're evil. Uh, these are the two major components of Palestinian ideology. It's Islamic identity and it's national identity. And on both these counts, 
uh, Jews were being portrayed and Israel was being portrayed um, as evil, as illegitimate, um, and even lacking the right to exist, not just as a state, but even as individuals. And this is one of the key things, and this comes up even in the school books, and I'll just point this out. The Palestinians, in order, the Palestinian leadership, in order to uh, galvanize its people against Israel, very often uses Islamic sources. Because the Islamic identity is a historic identity for generations, uh, and the Palestinian is really very shallow, uh, if at all, they use Islam and they present Islam as demonizing Jews. Jews are said to be the enemies of Allah, uh, the descendants of monkeys and pigs, and the, the, the resurrection, the hour of resurrection is contingent upon the killing of Jews and eventually the extermination of Jews. So when I say don't have a right to exist, it's not just Israel as a state that doesn't have a right to exist. It's even Jews as individuals ultimately don't have a right to exist. And I'll just give you some examples. This is even on children's programming. Even we have seen on children's programming on the official Palestinian Authority network, which is owned and controlled by the PA, nothing happens there without the PA wanting it. We've had children reciting poems describing Jews as despicable monkeys and wretched pigs. Jews are the enemies of Allah. Jews, they, they rape the women in the city squares. All of this demonization. There's one woman who uh, has a regular weekly program for children, uh, Wala Batat. Children's program is called The Best Home. And in one program, in a period of about a minute, she called Israelis barbarians over five times. And she said that you children shouldn't walk out in the street without your parents, even 15-year-olds and 18-year-olds, because Israelis are going to shoot you because they're barbarians. This, and so, so, it, so the child gets fearful. They're God's enemy. I'm afraid of them. And then the final message, and this is... This has come through even in children's context, but primarily it's for adults, but even for children. There's a source in Islamic tradition that says the hour of resurrection will come until Muslims fight the Jews and kill them. And then the final Jews are going to hide behind rocks and trees, and even nature, the rocks and the trees, are going to say, oh, Muslim servant of Allah, there's a Jew behind me, come and kill him. But it's not just Hamas that's teaching, it's the Palestinian Authority religious establishment is also teaching this to the children. We have found this on the, we found the picture of this, of, of this exact description. We found mm -hmm. a, a cartoon on the Facebook page of two official Palestinian Authority schools posted by the schools. Wow. What did you see? You saw a picture of this ugly, disgusting looking Jew hiding mm -hmm. behind a tree. And you see this young Palestinian running with, or Muslim, I guess, running with a rifle. Mm -hmm. And the tree is saying, Muslim servant of Allah, there's a Jew behind me, come and kill him. Very shortly, we will be coming out with a new report which really, really focuses on all the, all the issues of the newest Palestinian school books, the ones that came out literally just now for the new semester in January, February 2018. Okay. Uh, and these books of 2017 and 2018, I would say, are the worst books, believe it or not, the worst books that the Palestinian Authority has ever produced. Um, and I'll just give you some some of these uh, examples. Um, and I can actually show you even the examples uh, in these books. I'll, I'm going to start with a life science mm -hmm. book, and that's mm -hmm. why this is so, so shocking. Um, we have a life science book, and, and this is the picture that you see here mm -hmm. in the book. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, what is the text? You see, uh, first of all, what you see is a boy with a slingshot, mm -hmm. and he's throw his face is covered, and he's throwing the slingshot. At, he's shooting a slingshot at Israeli soldiers. Now, what's the text here? This is a science book. What is this picture doing in a science book? Well, there's actually a physics question attached to this, and I'll just read to you exactly what it and says. this is a life science That's right. textbook. That's right. And this is, which forces are acting on the rock after it is shot from the slingshot? And what is the connection between the extent of lengthening of the slingshot's rubber band and the force acting oh on it? Oh, my gosh. And what grade is this? And this is for grade 7. Seventh grade. Seventh grade in the Palestinian. This is 11, 12-year-old children. Exactly. Who are getting this type of propaganda in their textbooks. And this That's is right. the most recent textbook? These are the most recent textbooks. Recently published. Published 2017, yes. And there are many, many examples like this encouraging violence right through the textbooks. One of the incredible or, or tragic glorification of terror 
appears in a new textbook that literally just came out now, February 2018. Mm -hmm. And it's all about this woman here, Dalal Mughrabi. This is the actual page from the textbook. Uh, uh, who is this woman? She looks such, such an innocent looking person here. Mm -hmm. Well, in 1978, she led the most lethal terrorist attack in Israel's history. Uh, terrorists came from Lebanon by rubber boats. Okay. They hide, the first person they saw when they landed on Israel's shore was an American, Gail Rubin, who was a nature photographer. She was on the coast taking pictures of rare birds, uh, and they just murdered her because she happened to be in oh, the wrong oh place gosh. at the wrong time. Then they went a little further inland, and they stopped the bus with their machine guns. Uh, they got on the bus and eventually murdered 37 people, 12 children, mm -hmm. uh, 25 adults, they murdered two brothers and their mother. Uh, it was a horrific, horrific oh terror gosh. attack. But I want to read to you what they write. So they have a picture. They have a whole section here about her. And, and this is what they, they say about her. Our Palestinian history is full of the names of many martyrs who gave their lives for the homeland. One of them is the female Dalal Mugrabi, uh, who with her struggle recorded one of the pictures of defiance and courage and she becomes an eternal memory mm. in our hearts and our minds. Oh my gosh. And then there's a whole description and of the attack. And this is for fifth grade. Fifth grade? Is this, and this is a history book? Is this this a, is a, it's a uh, Arabic language school book for fifth grade. Oh my gosh. So that they are being taught that if you murder 37 Israelis, if you murder 12 children, two brothers and their mother, you are a Palestinian hero. You're courageous. And, and what does that tell a child? Oh, if I want to be a hero, if I want to do what my teachers and my parents expect of me, I should then go out and kill Israelis. And the result of this is that we have 15-year-olds murdering Israelis. And this is what the West provides funding for. When we provide funding that goes to education or Supposedly, I mean, what does the Palestinian Authority say about where this money goes? Is there any accountability? Does, the, does our administration, what about the Western countries? What about the countries in Europe that also um, fund the Palestinian Authority? Are they aware of this content that we, is being taught to these children? Well, we have recently started notifying them and we're planning a trip to go with the new reports, literally country by country. Uh, the EU itself, now this is fascinating, the EU itself a few years ago, because we told them that the Palestinian Authority was paying salaries to terrorists, they stopped giving any money to the general budget of the Palestinian Authority, and they now are putting almost all of it into the Ministry of Education. So they thought that they, what could be bad about education, they figured. Well, uh, look, look what could be bad obviously. about Obviously. The Ministry of Education are the publishers. The Palestinian Authority Ministry of Education is publishing these books. Every single new book on the inside cover has a letter signed by the Minister of Education. He is responsible. He's the head of the committee. He's the head of the committee that's doing these school books. So this is not some external force that is slipping these right. hate messages underneath the door. They're doing it right in-house. This is the Palestinian Authority wants its children to see murderers as heroes and role models because that way they will have a large group of potential terrorists mm -hmm. to draw on in the future, right. which is exactly what they want. Absolutely. I want to take you to Israel in pictures and film. I want you to see how God's sovereign hand can be seen before our eyes right here in this land. That's why PJTN is offering a special anniversary package that includes a captivating new book and award-winning DVD. Israel Rising is a unique visual story of Israel's miraculous journey from unforgiving desert to thriving nation. Thousands of years ago, the prophet Ezekiel foretold a future time in which the arid land of Israel would come alive for its people. Now this breathtaking book documents the fulfillment of this vision as rarely seen photographs from the 1880s to the 1940s are juxtaposed with recent photos of the same locations. This book will inspire and captivate you as it illuminates Israel's foretold awakening in a new and unforgettable way. In addition, you'll receive the award-winning documentary, Israel Indivisible, The Case for the Ancient Homeland. 
This inspiring film examines the many political twists and turns that make Israel the world's most controversial nation. From Abraham and the Promise to the issues facing the Jewish state today, the film examines the historical, archaeological, legal, and biblical foundations for the modern state of Israel. This is a limited time offer for these two remarkable resources for just a one-time gift of $70 today. Your generous donation will help ensure that PJTN stays on the front lines and in the headlines of all the important issues facing Israel and our Jewish brethren. So please go to PJTN.org today. From studying history, it's very clear that what starts with the Jews never ends only with the Jews we must strongly stand against any anti-Semitic trends. For if not stopped, they'll cause harm to all of us, and we'll witness the downfall of our Judeo-Christian Western culture. Today, many people say there's no longer a need for a Jewish state, that Jews around the world no longer need a place of refuge. But anyone who has heard recent statistics about the worldwide rise in anti-Semitism would never make such a claim. The reality is that neo-Nazi groups and Nazi sympathizers are increasing around the world. Surveys show that over one billion people in the world harbor anti-Semitic attitudes. Close to 50% believe that Jews have too much power in the business world, and two-thirds of the world's population has never heard of the Holocaust, or believe the historic accounts of it are inaccurate. Don't let yourself be manipulated by evil people with a wicked agenda. When the self-serving villains are in control, good people from all religions suffer. Muslims, Christians, and all people of conscience should stand proudly and show respect for a country that gives so much to the world in so many ways. Do your part, do your research, and do what you can to make a difference because what happens in Israel does affect us all. This is not just a Jewish or just an Israeli problem. This is a problem for all humanity, for each and every one of us who believe in freedom and human rights. Learn more about what you can do at pjtn.org. So let's, um, let's move now to the United Nations update us on where we are with UNRWA because we've seen recently in the news also that UNRWA has been involved in, um, in funding or providing curriculum for the Palestinian Authority children as well. Explain to us what's going on with UNRWA and where are we with UNRWA? The, the um, United Nations has another organization to deal with refugees, the High Commission for Refugees, and their goal is to solve refugee problems, mm -hmm. to end the problem. And they do very quickly. There are refugees from, there have been millions of refugees from conflicts uh, since World War II. And eventually, very quickly, they are all resettled in new places and they get on with their lives. Mm -hmm. UNRWA is a separate United Nations refugee issue and their mm -hmm. goal is just the opposite, to perpetuate their refugee status. There is no other refugee in the world who stays a refugee more than a couple of years. Mm -hmm. UNRWA intentionally kept these people as refugees and now when you today have only a few hundred thousand of the original refugees left you've got millions of people mm -hmm. uh, both within the Gaza Strip right. within Judea and Samaria within Lebanon Syria uh, Jordan all claiming to be Palestinian refugees and all getting money getting Western money through the United Nations right uh, uh, getting all this money and all they're doing is perpetuating they're telling little children who are age six mm -hmm. you're a refugee your right. home is Jaffa your home is right Israel. so UNRWA is one of the major contributors to the problem um, because of course Israel can never can never allow and there's no reason for Israel to allow right. in all these so-called refugees so is UNRWA also funding the programming, the cartoons? Where does the, the funding for the those cartoons come TV? from? That's coming from the Palestinian Authority general budget. Okay. They fund Palestinian TV. Uh, the UN isn't funding that, but the Western countries are, many Western okay. countries are. Without Western funding, the, uh, 
nine percent or so of the Palestinian budget, I'm sorry, more than nine percent, uh, okay. comes from Western funding. Okay. So they could not function. Seven percent of their funding goes to salaries to terrorists and about, I think if I'm not mistaken, close to thirty percent right. of their funding comes from foreign donors. Well, thirty percent funding gives you leverage, gives you the, pop the, the ability to demand certain messaging and the, the Western countries have been total failures, beyond total failures. Absolutely. We're paying for this with lives. We're paying for this with lives. There were another two people killed just now mm -hmm. in Israel uh, by terrorism right. just last week. Uh, we're paying for this with lives mm -hmm. because the Western world is continuing to fund. Solving the problem is the absolute way, and, and the amount of money that's going into UNRWA, they could certainly take part of it and start that process, and then it would be solved in a few years. But unfortunately, the political forces, especially the Palestinian mm -hmm. Authority, um, do you know that in Lebanon, in Lebanon, um, the laws are that a Palestinian or a ref someone, a resident of the refugee camp is not allowed to to improve their life and go out of the refugee camp and, and get an apartment outside. They're not allowed to get a job out of the refugee camp. Oh my camp. gosh. It's absolutely abuse. It's forcing these people. You will never stop being a refugee. And this is government policy uh, in Lebanon. So uh, it is quite a refugee. Um, as you know, I serve as a special envoy at the United Nations for the World Council of Independent Christian Churches. And I've been invited to participate on forums with Muslim women who came to the United Nations asking the women of the West to help them secure their freedoms and their rights in their countries. One woman from Tunisia boldly said that we have to demand that we search out these imams. They need to, to research the imams because it's the imams that are coming into the countries, they're preaching mm -hmm. in the mosque, and they're inciting this hatred. And she said um, uh, they're telling our people, our men, to kill Jews. This is what a woman from Tunisia said, and she recognized this is not normal. When people are told by the religious leader uh, that this is what Allah wants of you, and in Islam, uh, Islam means submission, uh, the, the, the questioning that is expected within Judaism and Christianity is not permitted at all in Islam. Uh, it is, the meaning of Islam is to submit Mm -hmm. And the it, it's not so you submit to the father you su and the father submits to the imam right. and the wife submits to the father and the children to the mother. Everybody is submitting to to someone else. Mm -hmm. um, and when the father believes that this is what Allah wants of him, he must submit. He doesn't want to burn in hell for a thousand years, right. um, which is what the the people who don't follow Allah are going to get. And by the way, it's not just a thousand years. According to Islamic tradition, mm -hmm. those people who Allah does not accept uh, that they, or, or if they sinned, mm -hmm. uh, possibly even smoking in Ramadan, no one knows because it's not clear. It makes everybody fearful all the time. Uh, they burn for a thousand years in hell. The entire time they're begging that Allah should kill them. Mm. And then after a thousand years, the angel comes and says, what do you want? He says, I want to die. Fine. Oh, and, and during these thousand years, your skin is burnt off and then Allah gives it back to you, and then it burns off again, and it comes back. This oh is gosh, this is the, the Islamic tradition about what's happening to people in hell. And then after a thousand years, uh, you're begging this whole time to die, and then uh, to have this stop, and then uh, Allah comes, or the angel comes, and says, you're going to have another thousand years, and then it starts again. This is wow. what people are, I'll tell you something fascinating. We Fear. Fear. Yeah. The fear, and let me tell you about this fear component. We have a number of people in our office at PMW who uh, grew up in, in Muslim countries. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to one of the girls, she was at the time, she was probably 22, 23, mm -hmm. young woman, uh, who to, through age 16 was in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So after I had read this whole description, we were having an office meeting and I remember saying to her, I said, did you learn this, 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 this mm -hmm. business when you right. were there, you know, about this thousand years of burning? She says, of course we did, everybody does. So what, what grade were you in? She says, we were probably, you know, she's probably in grade three, so I said, oh, three, that's so young. I said, do the students even listen, or do you just ignore it because it's some religious, you know, silly religious teaching? She said, are you kidding? We all sat there like this. Scared to and death. Scared to death, exactly. So what happens is grade, you know, grade three, you're talking 10 year, uh, you know, eight year olds, nine right. year olds. Um, they're being, the fear of doing what's wrong and punishment mm -hmm. is already becoming a part of their psyche. 
So of course, and then of course it's the girls, of course it's the men. Right. They grow up with this fear. No one knows what makes someone um, good or bad. So you always have to be fearful. You always, you're always, and then you believe, well, my daughters did this. Allah wants right. me to kill them. And he believes he has having a call from Allah. He doesn't mm -hmm. think he's doing something cruel. He thinks he's serving Allah by murdering his daughters. That's the tragedy of, of this kind of education. Mm -hmm. And if that's what's coming into the United States, uh, it is, of course, dangerous for the United States as well. Well, we've come to the end of another edition of Focus on Israel. And I want you to know we appreciate hearing from you. Please send your comments and questions to comments at pjtn.org, and I'll gladly read them on a future program. I hope I've made it clear that the time to stand up is now. Be a leader in your community and in your church. One person can make a difference. Get involved with and support pro-Israel organizations such as PJTN. Call your senators, congressmen, the White House. Let your elected leaders hear from you. Visit our website to learn more. Sign up to receive free newsletters, action alerts, daily blogs, and order our films to share with family and friends. I want to thank you for watching our program today. Please encourage your family and friends to tune in and become informed as well. God bless you, and thank you for all you do on behalf of our Jewish brethren and all Israel. We'll see you next time on Focus on Israel. To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, P.O. Box 682711, Franklin, Tennessee, 37068. You can also support PJTN online. Visit PJTN.org or call 1-877-873-9020. Anti-Semitism has reached epic proportions, and Israel is now surrounded by nations who seek its destruction. For Israel to lose just one battle would mean losing everything. As Christians, it is our biblical responsibility to stand with our Jewish brethren and Israel. PJTN needs your help to reach more Christians with this urgent message. Please visit our website to become a member today and order our award-winning documentaries. You must decide that you won't be silent. Sign up now at PJTN.org. God bless you and thank you for your support and prayers.